Welcome to the IJDM Thanksgiving Special, episode 88. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. The gang is all here. Today we are testing out multiple laptops, but not all of these laptops. There's actually some off camera over that way, but we're mainly testing these three for the reason of to see which one makes the best DOS gaming laptop. We've talked about specs, we've talked about different things, but between Compact, ThinkPad, Toshiba, and there's a few others out there, which one really stands out the most between the three of them? There is other options out there, I wanna cover this first before I get into it, that you can consider like in the back row there, um, a newer, laptop but again if you're doing a lot of dos gaming you got the 1024 by 768 screen which sometimes can be an issue with up resing and you're also dealing with windows xp era stuff and dealing with having to do a lot of weird tweaks and stuff to make them work the way you want them to work that being said there is emulators out there for them but uh you know it's one of those things if you want more of a pure dos environment uh then and you want the true experience then obviously you want to stick to this rather than a virtualized system and even going into newer laptops you can obviously use DOSBox and do many of the configurations and and have that great experience as well on modern pcs and laptops however sometimes it's just neat playing on era equipment it it, it brings in a, a different type of feel and just something different let's start off with the first test and I did not script this out as I usually do not, is we are going to test up boot up times to from uh, the BIOS straight into the DOS prompt. These are all loaded with exactly the same operating system. It's Windows 95, I think first or second generation. Um, and they go straight to the DOS prompt. I only use Windows 95 for file management. It's just easier than trying to do it within DOS. And I also have the PCM CIA uh, slot card with the SD card if I want to load new software onto these computers. And these are all capable of serial connections. So if you want to play head to head on, on certain games like Duke Nukem, then obviously you can do that between these different laptops. So you don't necessarily have to have two of these or two of these you can mix and match and they are compatible with one another uh, uh, via the serial link doing it that way so let's get into this first test and let's start off with the one on my left which is the compact 5000 lte complete with the 640 by 480 screen this is one i personally rebuilt pretty much ground up it's got a new keyboard new trackpad a track point i should say or whatever they call them on here um, it does have new bezels and stuff and I pieced together from other laptops. It does have a slight screen issue with some dotting in it and a weird little thing where I have to kind of squeeze the screen here, but I think that's just an edge connector that needs to be cleaned and, and remounted. But at this point, I, I don't use it enough, honestly, to bother with it at, yet. So um, it's one of those things that, well, we were going to get started. And as I, you can see, I am already having one issue. The issue I was having, <laughs> real quick, I had to get up and try to fix is the uh, power box on that unit. The adapter is a little wonky sometimes. If it's not in there just right, it, then it's trying to power from battery, and I don't want to do that. So let's start our first test, and I'm hitting the switch. Bam. And waiting for the boot. Okay, screen's coming up. I'm not sure how well you can hear this or see this rather or not as my birds are cooing in the background. I, I changed to this room so I have a little more room and more table space to display them all in the same video. I had did another version of this video but I wasn't really happy with the way it turned out because I felt like things were too separated and they weren't really all together and they should be all together as like a little family. It's Thanksgiving. They're all kind of having their feast on the table I guess you could say. Stop. Okay. About 33 seconds. I was a second or two late hitting that when I saw the DOS prompt. Uh, but it, it's been the same test and I have done these off camera. So this one, not so great. And it does have the BIOS on it that you want that if you go to the newest one, it's it can take up to two minutes for to finally uh, hit its, uh, its DOS prompt. So let's go ahead and reset that. That being said, 33 seconds on the compact. Moving over to the trusty IBM ThinkPad. 
and you notice I kind of hit the timer after. I just kind of give it a minute for that, that on, and I did the same thing with that one. So, you know, we're plus or minus two or three seconds here. We're not trying to be totally scientific. We just want to see what's what and how fast these things actually boot up. And bam, okay, second or two off. So we can give that anywhere between, let's say 16 and 19 seconds. This one obviously up in the 30s, so almost twice the boot time on that one. And older computers, you gotta be patient with. And maybe it's something with the RAM. This one does have a little, slightly less RAM. I'm not really sure, but I have heard the BIOS uh, post on this is, is actually is slower compared to most laptops. I have read about that. And let's try the good old, well, if I can find the power button. Ooh, no, we didn't hit it. And this one's tricky because I have to hit it hard, but I also have to hit my, there it goes. And waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and do we have a screen? Yes, we do. Running through a quick memory test. And... Doop. Okay, a little slower than this one. And this one is kind of newer compared to these two, but these two rank about the same. Well, this one's about twice the, the thing, but I'd say these two are pretty comparable of their era. So they, they both have uh, al almost the same specs. I think they all have the 66DX2, but I can't be completely sure without looking it up. I can put a graphic up if, if somebody really cares about the exact specs. I just tried to optimize it for stuff like Duke Nukem and, and different things like that. Uh, as far as Windows uh, 95, when I do file handling, it all pretty much, all three of them go in about the same amount of time. So let's do the next test. And uh, this one will be relatively straightforward. Let's see how they type. And I'm kind of behind the camera, so it's awkward typing. But uh, this keyboard is absolutely horrid. It just, it feels awful. I mean, I've heard... You can get the same laptop and the keyboard feels totally different. Things can be said about different ones, but this it just doesn't feel right at all. I mean, total, no, that's a no on me. This one. Hmm. Start typing at this angle. This one feels awesome. This one definitely feels good. It's got that nice... Yeah, it's got that nice strike to it and it's the back plate got a nice tactile feel what about this one well this one is okay this one's kind of in between these two i would say probably comparable to this one it's just the keys are countersunk and it makes it awkward with the way your fingers are kind of placed on it so the keyboard test between the three of them yeah definitely definitely this one I was gonna say this this one wins it hands up every time. Let's go into the next test, which is actually going into sound. And let me get, clear this out. And we'll clear this out. I know you may not be able to see the screens great just because DOS is a dark type environment. It's like the original dark mode. Turn up that volume. Let's do this. Yeah connectors okay well let's try this one Okay. If 
you notice, this one doesn't have that initial intro sound, and I'll explain that in a moment. Okay, now that we've heard all three thoughts, this one, definitely the best. It's got that stereo sound. The speakers up here, they're crispy. They, not a lot of bass, but it gives you good stereo effect and well-placed. They're more at ear level from where you're sitting. So that one definitely has its plus on the sound. This one sounds very clear and concise, but it's only one speaker. It's very mono and the speakers here, it, I, I think it sounds okay, but I, you know, this one sounds like it has the most bass though. And maybe it's just the way the sound card's configured because the sound card configurations in this Tosh is definitely kind of funky trying to get it just right and get it set up right. It uses some really weird wonky stuff when trying to configure these. And maybe somebody knows the best way to set it up for uh, Duke Nukem 3D. I was just using this one as kind of the benchmark for all of them because of, uh, and I just noticed something with the demos on these. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like the scores are actually different. I guess it runs a different demo each time it started. Huh. Anyhow, let's get back to the task at hand. Um, I'm going to say first place, second place, third place on this one. And the roundup on the uh, keyboards, first place, second place, third. And then um, let's take a look at the screens while we have them up. And I'm going to say out of all of them... This one's got a little different screen because it does use an 800 by 600 and it is up res. So it's got a little bit of that artifacting feel and a little less sharp look to it. So I, I can't give it too much off because I could always just shove it. Let's see if it'll do it while I'm doing this. No, it won't let me switch while I'm in a game. But anyhow, I, I th this one isn't bad. I think if it had the same screen as the other two, then it'd be a little more comparable. But I'm not going to rank this one in or out because of its screen resolution. Let's just say that it's definitely a better situation if you have the screen size that's 640 by 480. This screen has some issues and it probably could be replaced at this point. It's got little dots, but I don't even see them as of right now. This screen is the brightest and the most clear. I would say this one is definitely second and this one is third. But I can rank this one better in some situations than others. In our last two categories, aesthetics. I gotta say this one, first place all the way. I just, I don't know. I just like the look and the feel and everything about this laptop. I think this one has the best aesthetic to it, like little red highlights. And maybe this one's second, maybe this one's third, but this, that's personal preference. As far as construction and build, that flips everything totally around here. I think this is gonna illustrate it best. And again, on. Screen brightness on this one, these two have adjustments. This one on the right side does not. So if anybody knows how to adjust the brightness on these satellite pros, let me know on the TFT uh, active matrix screens because sometimes it is a bit too bright when you're in a dark room at night. That's the one thing I've noticed about it. Build quality. Uh, well, there's a reason why I'm not folding this one down. It's got catastrophic just hinge failure and plastics and, and it could be the way these were all stored, but just in reference of other ThinkPads I've had in my collection, that this era was just a poor era of hinges for them. They just don't hold the test of time. And this one needs a major rebuild. And call SOS out. Anybody lives in the uh, Tampa Bay area that wants to help me rebuild this one, I would be more than welcome to, uh, the, to uh, challenge them to help me get this done if they know what they're doing so that uh, it's a little more sturdy and maybe I have to buy parts from another laptop. But it does have some cracks and crease. And then this hinge is like catastrophic failure here with a, you can actually see where the hinge is buckling through, which is why I'm not folding it up. I pretty much have to leave it open all the time like that, which puts this one out of the race for me on this particular rating thing, even though I would love for this one to show up as number one, because it is my favorite and it did show up. It was pristine just, but using it the last year or so, it's just started to just kind of crumble. It's just kind of like having that cookie in your pocket. And then it just, after a while, it's just all crumbs. And it's, that's what it's starting to feel like. There's not much left to it. And I just got to enjoy it while it lasts. It's cousin that's sitting over here kind of off camera, um, which I can show. And I'm not afraid to move this one around because it's built a little more solid. And that being said, there is other ThinkPad models that are built a little more 
secure and solid than that one where you, I actually feel secure where I can just close the hinge and, and bud. This one also suffered a failure. It's, it's an older one than even this one. It probably matches up better with these, but uh, the problem with this particular thing bad is it just decided it does not want to work anymore for me. And I've been having issues all along with it, but it is in pristine condition. It's just, it's probably got a bad cap or something inside that needs to replace and some bad RAM. So the final thoughts on construction, well, number one, number two, and number three. This one, I feel it could be my daily driver. I could take this with me, throw it in a secure case and feel like it's going to be safe. Um, the fact that the hard drive is easy to swap out if you wanna go ahead and, and switch it out to a different operating system. The floppy drive is probably the slowest on this one, but I think there was just different types of floppy drives that this, this unit had. These two seem to be a lot quicker with their floppy drive access. If you want to be looking for something, your compact is probably your best choice for durability and, and, and as far as life use, in my opinion. This can all be different because of obviously the way the laptop was treated over its lifetime. If you go to a brand, you know, three brand new one of these, then maybe it, maybe this one comes out on top, maybe this one. The reason I didn't choose this one and it is built pretty solid is it does have some problems with the plastic as well and a small hairline crack I was able to repair but this one no matter how many times I repaired the cracks they just keep coming back. That is it for this IJDM special. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't like it you can hit dislike too. I'm, I'm fine with that. I you know not everybody's taste. We'll have more things coming up in the future. For now hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.